This is a Brunch Pre-Oscars mini-podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you'd logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Anatomy of a fall. Anatomy d'un shoot. Pardon my French. From director, you know that's what it's called? Anatomy d'un shoot. D'un shoot. Un shoot. From director Justine Trier is a French legal drama in which a writer is placed on trial for her husband's death. It has a runtime of two hours and 32 minutes, a Rotten Tomato score of 96, and an audience score of 90. It's got the fifth best betting odds at plus 3,500. Like nine others, it won't win. It's nominated for five Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Sanda Huller, Best Original Screenplay, Best Editing. We've not talked about this movie ever, Pete. How do you feel about Anatomy of a Fall? I'll tell you what. If you told me that you are going to watch a... What's the runtime of this movie? It is uh, two hours and 32 minutes. If you told me that you were going to force me to watch a two and a half hour French courtroom drama, I'd tell you... I'm the one that jumped off the balcony and killed myself because I am not watching this movie. Spoilers. This movie... Or did you? (laughs) This movie, way better than it has any business being in terms of, like, I this this movie ejects all the boxes of things that I don't fucking want to watch. And it was riveting. I love this movie. I'm so glad that you... That's a great way of... And a terrible way of uh, putting it, of, like, <laughs> I did not... I shouldn't I'd have liked this movie. I'd rather paper watch this movie. On paper, I... Yeah. Should not like this movie, but I did. Uh, I didn't know anything about it going in. Same. I saw Sandra Huller, and I was like, I feel like I've been seeing more and more of her. Uh, I'll just say it right now before I get into the how and why I love it. Uh, big time, uh, my, at, at this point, my favorite for the stool bark this year. Uh, this year's stool bark. Yep. She's also in Zone of Interest. Sandra Huller. Yeah. Is uh, this year's stool bark. Uh Two, yeah, she's in two movies that are nominated for Best Picture, which automatically puts her in the running for the Stool Bog Award, yeah. which, by the way, if you don't know, is a actor or actress who has kind of been in multiple acclaimed movies in a year. Yeah, I mean, that one year he had Call Me By Your Name, The Shape of Water, The Post. Mm. And even though whenever someone brings up The Post, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, right. Hate that movie. I'm like, yeah, but Stuhlbarg was in it that year that he Stuhlbarged hard. All right. Uh, I think it's uh, a great, great movie, which two hours and 32 minutes, legal drama. You're like, oh, that probably is going to be a slog. It's not. Uh, I, uh, shit. Oh, uh, my first thought off the premise of this movie is if you are a writer and you get married, you got to make sure your partner doesn't die because they <laughs> yeah. are going to think you did it right away. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. a writer. She killed him. Also, He's a writer. He killed him. Also, like if you're a writer and you're married to a writer, if one of you dies, the, is he a writer? Uh, yes. Because- He's also a writer. Yeah, well, he's a... Uh, so that's why she gets off in the end, because they're like, well, he was a writer. He could have done it. Well, he was a uh, he was famously not not really writing. A little out of practice, that's right. A little right. out of practice. Um, but if, you, if you're a writer and you're married to a writer and one of you dies, the other one has got they're, something to write about. They're get, Well, in prison, because they're <laughs> right. getting accused and possibly convicted. Uh, there's so much juicy info on this movie I want to give you. I'm glad that we've just both said, like, love it, watch it, see it, great, because I want to get into some of the juice from this movie. Well, before we do that, I just want to mention, like, the performances in this movie are just, like, out of this world. She's terrific. Is she a Sandra Hewler? Hewler? Hula. Hula. She's a Hula. Uh, <laughs> she fucking crushes this movie. Absolutely destroys it, but so does... Literally every person in this movie. The husband, mm-hmm. he's in it for a little bit, crushes his role. The kid, the son, is unbelievable. Even the dog, Snoop, crushes his role in a very, very crucial and Good heart-wrenching role. Good dog. Yes. Dog's there for a lot of the stuff in that. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with all that. Hooler's got no chance of winning because she's got Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone ahead of her, but so glad she's nominated. Like that's she's in the tier of like, yeah, won't win, but better get nominated. I would put, I, I would say like, 
big three there. And if any of them came away with it, I would be totally okay with it. Oh, I mean, it would fuck shit up if it she would. got that upset, but, but I'd love it. When you say, like, she has no chance. She I does have no chance. Like, probably, logically, you're right. But just in case there is a chance, it's a deserved chance. Watch Carrie Mulligan grab that shit. Um <laughs> This is not so. This is a French legal drama. I said, it is not nominated for best international feature film. That What's doesn't going make on there? Any sense to me? Let me give you the sense. France ch- France chose to submit a movie called The Taste of Things as its representative. So the film academies from the given countries say, hey. This is our this is what we want to be nominated. So they submitted this movie called The Taste of Things, and it is believed that this was punishment for Justine Trier criticizing the French president during her acceptance speech at the 2023 Cannes Film Festival. The Taste of Things was not nominated, did not end up being nominated. So they submitted it to be nominated, and the Academy was like, cool. This movie sucks. So basically, as a result of this not being submitted by France, Zone of Interest is definitely going to win because it has no competition. It's the Zone of Interest is the only best picture uh, nom- nomination in the international feature film category. Yeah. How which about is, that drama? Which is fucking wild to me because like, I was stunned to find out that Past Lives was not an international movie. Because you're racist. No, but like, it, it, it's like largely not in English. None of it is in, like, none of it is based in America. None of it's based yeah. in America. And it, what it is. Actually, uh, Canada, but you know, they end up in America for a little bit. A little she moves bit. To, yeah, but you're right. Like, it's not an American movie. Right. So uh, that was surprising to me. I. I Talk about fumbling the bag, not submitting this movie and seeing it get nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, that's a, a cool one, France. <laughs> yeah, right. Is if I wanted French le- if I wanted French d- drama, I would watch uh, the movie Anatomy of a Fall. <laughs> so, Jeez. way to go, France! You fucked this one up. Um, this movie, I think, has one of the best scenes of the entire year um and it is a very crucial scene it is the the argument scene the argument scene here is i want to say that scene is like 10 minutes in length 10 to 15 minutes somewhere in that 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 range it is a better version of the marriage story yes it is way better than that marriage story scene this one is just and it's so necessary at the point in which it comes in the movie because it comes uh, in the midst of a lot of courtroom. There's like a lengthy courtroom um, examinations, and it and it is tough to watch at some points. Like it's kind of like a burden well, to watch to some remember, of those. To that point in the movie, you're getting a lot of conjecture, right? And a lot of trying to piece things together, and you are just as the viewer dying for a smoking gun mm-hmm. and. Then they give you this thing where you're like, you had that for me? And, and, and they build up your to socks it. off. They, they build up to it quite a bit, and then they get to that that scene, and it does knock your socks off. It is, like, it's so captivating, it's so intense, and the performances are outrageous. So uh, one of the better scenes of the year, and if we're talking about, like, getting the reel or whatever it is, they, they better fucking throw that on the reel. And that is why, I mean, you mentioned, like, the husband's not really in it. The husband, it, from, like, when the movie starts to when it ends, obviously, like, chronologically, the the husband isn't really in it at all. But for that, I'm like, I would toss a nomination his way. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, I mean, like, it's the, the what, the Judy Dench from uh from I mean we've gone Belfast. we've done some like 6 minutes of screen time. I mean he's probably in it for like 20 minutes. For that scene alone again I think it's like 10 to 15 minutes mm. and just just mwah, 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 and smoking so many cigarettes. I can't believe we have made it this far without uh mentioning the music in this film. Uh 50 cents PIMP I kid you not plays a crucial crucial part in this movie. It plays a steel drum cover, or like a steel drum band cover is played uh, at a critical part in this movie, and it's a part of the movie that is examined over and over and over again, so they have to keep playing the song, and you hear this song so many times. Before I proceed, how did you feel about that? 
I thought it was great. <laughs> I, well, I love seeing 50 Cent have a moment in like a a prestige French, French film. legal drama. <laughs> yes. Would I have anticipated it in any world? Absolutely not. But I fucking loved it. Let me give you the greatest backstory I've ever heard in my life. Okay. As the movie was originally written, the song that is played is Dolly Parton's Jolene. And wow. a lot was going to be made, like, in the court, analyzing the lyrics to the song. And I should note that this PIMP cover that is played is just entirely instrumental. Mm -hmm. So uh, the song originally, as Justin Tree, as Justine Trier uh, thought it would be, would be Jolene. They're going to analyze the lyrics, do all this stuff. But whoever owns the song and the rights rejected it. They said, I don't think so. We like the French president. Or something. Okay. She hadn't criticized the French president at that point. But uh, so they pivoted to an instrumental cover of 50 Cent's PIMP. And that, folks, is how you get nominated for Best Director. <laughs> hashtag my director. Hashtag I don't know the politics of it, but I stand with Justine. That is tr truly amazing. And it uh, it warms my heart because... That's the first time that I had thought of PIMP in years. It years made me years look up years. whether or not that was a sample. Like, did PIMP sample something? Is that are they playing that song? Is is maybe the original version of this song a very long loop of just that one part? Nope. That was the the thing that they play in this movie is somebody else having heard PIMP saying, "Boys and girls, grab your instruments, grab your steel drums." We're making a cover of it. I, I think that, like, obviously Jolene makes sense in the context of the movie and, like, them analyzing the lyrics would make a lot of sense in that. But I feel like maybe it would have been too on the nose. Uh, this uh, Everything happens for a reason. And them landing on this, it just seems like they, they still kind of go into it a little bit and, like, that here's what this song, like, means, might symbolize. But it's it's a bit more, like... Well, you're you're reaching here so you know agree and if i were if i were like a focus group member or on a jury for this kind of decision which this would never make sense but if they were like all right we're working on this movie somehow like let's imagine we're working on the movie somehow we're low on the totem pole and they're like we need you to help us uh settle this we want to go with Jolene, but they're asking for this much money. And if we don't go with Jolene, we're kind of screwed. And as uh, Justine Trier said that she had this PIMP cover on her laptop for some reason. That's hilarious. So <laughs> she was like, all right, well, well, we'll just work with this. And just it was like a placeholder kind of thing. And that so it, if they it were works like, so well because it's so abrasive. Ex exactly. If they were like, okay, we're trying to figure it out. Should we pony up for Jolene or we can use this? It's a little cheaper and I know it'll be a little of I would be so like fire me before you use Jolene. Yeah. I it can only be this steel drum cover of PIMP. It's so abrasive, which fits the like the context of it being played in that scene because it's supposed to be fucking annoying and supposed to like kind of grate against what's happening downstairs. And I also think that it makes a lot more sense for somebody who is like a working tortured artist to play a loop of an instrumental that like is so fucking annoying and being like what What's going on up there? Like, what is in this guy's brain that makes him play the song over and over and over again? Whereas, like, Jolene is a, like, a classic. And it it just does it won't rub you the wrong way in the same sense that the PIMP cover did. So, ultimately, a blessing in disguise that uh, Dolly Parton's camp was like, nah. I so agree with that. Uh, I think that your read on it in that context and just with that instrumentation being pretty abrasive is excellent the whole everything happens for a reason thing totally on board with you there let's run down some positives for this movie i'll start and say great main character and lead performance uh it is of this year it is the coolest beer movie there's some scenes where she's just slugging beers yeah, that's true. I mean, the uh, the cell. Uh, oh, uh, that uh, spoiler alert! There's a celebratory dinner at the end of the movie, mm. and they're just hammering 
Um, I want to say it's like Heineken's they got going on or so, some. It's, there's a green bottle. Could, could be like Sapporo because mm. they're at a. I believe that they're at a an oh, Asian yes. restaurant. Yep. Um, and so they're hammering food and drinks, and I was like, "Damn, this looks like a party." The over beers. There. This this movie makes beer look very good. And then as I cigarettes, mm-hmm. great cigarette scenes. As um, I said, P I M P as well. Yeah, uh, performances across the board are great. The writing unbelievable, and I loved the ending. I loved the ending. I loved what they did with it. I loved that they kind of forced you to, to think and to figure things out. There's a lot of guessing in this movie. There's a lot of wondering where they're going to go next, which is is crucial because if you're doing like a courtroom drama, you cannot you cannot like telegraph anything because you're going to lose people's interest. They're going to be like, okay, get it over with. Let's get to the end. The third act keeps you guessing and they force you to think. And they I really force you to come up with kind of choose your own ending, mm-hmm. and and I like that a lot. I really wouldn't change much about this movie. This isn't a negative, just a statement of fact. It's not an exciting movie. No. So if that's what you want out of it, you're not going to enjoy the movie. Like this is a movie that we both happen to love it. I'm so glad that you love it. I don't expect everybody to love it, and I would be annoyed if everybody just said that they loved it because this movie should put people that i would then criticize for this but like should put some people to sleep agree yeah i um uh, it's again i think it's one of those movies that has no business being as good as it is but like some people it's just not their cup of tea and that's fine like and it's also a lot to sit through Mm -hmm. um i did watch it in two sittings which i think i did too probably helped me but like you know the subject matter it's a there's a lot of dialogue courtroom drama obviously there's a lot of like reading there's a lot of testifying and there's a lot of kind of trying to figure out what's going on there. And it can be a lot to sift through. And the subject matter is heavy. It's emotional. And so that might not be for everybody, like you mentioned. But I don't see it necessarily as a criticism. Letterboxed me. Uh, a f- solid four out of five for me. I went into this conversation with a four. And as I was, one of us was speaking... I bumped it up to a four and a half because I was like, oh, yeah, I do love this movie so much. It's a, It sounds like, though, you're a four that if you had to be pushed in one direction, you'd go um, up yeah. rather than down. Four is my floor. Yeah, like I wish that this could – I wish that we could give like 4.1 mm-hmm. or 4. Point, it, it's great, and like Sandra Hula ain't going anywhere, and if you think she is, then you are a Hula. <laughs> Change my mind. That's Anatomy of a Fall. Watch it. 